Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I will be reviewing Advance Man, part one of the Honeycomb Trilogy by Mac Rogers. So you all probably know by now that most of what I read is plays. And I love reading plays, but one thing I miss out on a lot of the time by reading plays rather than books, well, there's two things, actually. Sci-fi stories and trilogies. So you can imagine my excitement and surprise that when I heard that there was a sci-fi trilogy of plays that I was right on board with this. So the Honeycomb Trilogy by Mac Rogers. Um, this is not published in a traditional fashion yet, uh, I had to get these three copies uh, from directly from Samuel French, which is the website where you usually go to to get like scripts, obviously, but also uh, licensing for these shows. And a lot of the uh, other like popular plays, like Mr. Burns, which I really need to review about at some point, on uh, and the uh, like I don't know like Angels in America, like a lot of the popular plays that you would buy or license, you could also buy them from like Amazon or Barnes Noble even to get like a traditional book esque copy. But you can see these these are just like acting edition scripts. That's all you can get of this right now that I know of. Uh, so I, I was so excited that I was, wasn't even going to wait till they had a more traditional book reading type of this published. I just went right to Save No Fridge and I bought all three at once. And I've only read the first one so far. But after this, I am beyond excited to read the other two. So I guess I just spoiled the review for this. Uh, it's already, a, you can already tell it's going to be a positive review. I just read this and I jumped right on to record this video because I loved this play. So good. So good. And, like, I understand that the reason why sci-fi isn't done often in the theater is because it's difficult to pull off. I mean, bringing that technology or, like, the aliens or the effects, the laser beams, whatever, onto the stage is really hard to do believably. And a lot of the time, that genre is just constricted to TV and novels and movies and such. But it's really a shame because I see that as, like, it should be seen as a challenge as to playwrights should want to see how they can do this. And there are ways to do it. And Mac Rogers figured it out because it is done so well in this play. By it, I mean the genre of sci-fi. I mean, there aren't any laser beams and the aliens don't really appear necessarily, uh, but technology does. But anyway, I'm almost verging into spoiler territory. But the way to present sci-fi in a way that isn't super challenging to stage is done so well here. And actually the entire play takes place in one room. And that's quite impressive. I have read another sci-fi play that did all take place in pretty much one location. That was R.U.R. by Karel Chopek. I might do a review on that at another time, but that's a very old play. It's in the public domain, so you can see like how far things have come by then. That play was just a lot of them just talking about what was going on outside. You could tell that the action was happening outside of what you could actually see, and all the sci-fi stuff wasn't really seen. But here, it's kind of, it's hard to describe, but even though they are in one room and they are most of the time just talking about things, you can tell that, like, you know something's happening. You know that you f it feels like a sci-fi story. It, it really does, even though you don't necessarily see laser beams and all that, like I was just saying. Anyway, what is this actually about? I'm rambling now. This play is about the Cook family, or it's partially about the Cook family. So, Bill Cook was an astronaut, and he was stationed on Mars with another, a bunch of other astronauts, but he's back home now. So yeah, this play takes place in the future, but not super, super far in the future. Like, it doesn't say when in the play description, it just says uh, several years in the future. That can mean, any, mean anything, but based on... They, the characters still have, like, like normal cell phones, and the house seems fairly normal from the way it's described, so, like, it's not super, super future, just enough that we could have been landed on Mars at this point, which it's believable. I mean, a lot of people believe that within... Our lifetime we are going to see a Mars landing and that's that's cool that's something to look forward to I don't know if it's gonna happen or not but I'd be excited anyway in the universe of the honeycomb trilogy the Mars landing did happen and more so than that it happened so Bill Cook was one of the astronauts there and the rest of his team were also there so when they got back though they had this new mission assigned to them by NASA or whoever it was that was employing them I think it was NASA I don't really remember it was sort of NASA sort of other stuff but now, based on something they discovered on Mars, their new mission would be to set up a way to kind of solve the Earth's many, like, food crises and, like, shortages. The whole, they had this new technology science stuff happened that made it so, at least they're saying that they can use swamps to, like, generate food organically. They don't describe that part super well, 
be quite honest, but the thing is, that's not actually what's happening, which is probably why they don't describe it well. Because this whole, you find out fairly early on that this whole, like, growing food from swamps to save the earth thing was actually just a front for what's actually going on. I'm not going to tell you what actually is going on, because that is a major spoiler. But you can tell very soon on that there is something sinister going on beneath the surface. And that is mainly where the action of this play comes from, because everyone at points will act like things are noble, at points they'll act like they're not, but you know that something's happening. You know that something is going to be coming at the climax, and believe me, something does happen. Pretty big something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is, because spoilers! The things that are good about this play aren't just the plot itself, what makes it unique, it's, it's the interaction with the characters. Like I said, it's about a family, for the most part. So Bill Cook's the astronaut, he has a wife, Amelia, and they have a very good relationship, it seems like, again, things beneath the surface. They also have uh, two children, both teenagers, there's a boy and a girl, and a uh, girl, Ronnie, she's kind of like tough, she's been into detention several times for getting into physical fights with people, that's a recurring theme in this play, and also uh, Abby is the, the younger one, he's the son, and he's very creative, and he likes drawing a lot, and he's currently working on a graphic novel, which is a huge part of this play, but you know early on that it's going to be something you don't quite know what, and then it reveals itself and you're like, okay. It's hard to talk about this play without giving away spoilers, because it is really one of those plays where you just have to kind of slowly figure out what's going on. And honestly, yeah, it's something else that might be a little bit of all of this play, you do... It's not hard to predict what's going to happen, but the thing that happens is so big and cool that you don't usually see on the stage that I still credit it as being one of the play's strong suits. The interaction with the family. Again, going off on a tangent here. So, the family, they all have very clear, dynamic relationships. They're not necessarily, like, lovey-dovey to each other, but they do love each other. You can get the sense that they do. They make they make jokes, and they, they do stuff. It's really interesting seeing the relationship. I especially like the relationship with the two siblings, because they're so different, but you can tell they, they do care about each other. And it's, it's really interesting, like, the language they'll use for each other. It's some very, like, personal thing, like, well, I, I have a sister, I would never say that to my sister, that's a little, like, TMI, but at the same time, you can tell, like, it's just who they are as a family, and also taking place in the future, like, being vulgar and all that is already starting to be more of a thing, and I can see that if we go in farther in the future, that people will just say what they want with no filter, and that it makes sense. Also, the, the two parents they have, they seem to have a very, at times, very cute relationship, although they argue also, but, again, there's something sinister beneath the surface. And you find out, early on, like I keep saying, that Bill is hiding something from everyone. So even when you see him being romantic with his wife or fatherly to his children, it just hurts because you'll find out in like a few sentences later, he'll say something, you're like, okay, he's, he's just trying to keep them comfortable until something's going through, something's gonna happen, what's he doing behind the surface? And it's very, it's tense. This play is tense. And there's there's humor. There's I think it's actually very funny at points. There's humor, there's... There's uh, drama, there's strange things, but it's tense because you know something is going to happen and you don't know quite what it's going to be. I sort of figured it out along the way, but again, the whole sci major sci-fi thing is so rarely done in theater that it adds to the suspense because you really don't know how it's going to be presented. Of course, I just read this. I didn't see it live. I'd love to, but like, I imagine sitting in the audience, I'd be so curious about what's actually going to show up on, like physically on the stage next because... You, you're not, we're not used to that happening on theater. We, we, there's some things that are trends in plays that we can think, like, yeah, have some basis of what might happen next, but because sci-fi theater is done so rarely, it works so well in this play when they do have that surprise going for you. I don't know if anything I'm saying makes sense right now, but I'm just, I'm just excited about this. There, there's other characters, too, other than the family, and they're all pretty interesting, too. They're, for the most part, with the exception of one character, they're the other astronauts that were also on Mars, and they're in on the whole thing. The thing that I can't tell you about. They all have their own different opinions and approaches to it. And their interactions with Bill are very different than Bill's interactions with his family. Their interactions with Bill's family are very inter different than Bill's interactions with his family. And they feel like real people. They interact as real people would. And given whatever situation, it makes a lot of sense how they interact. And they're a very believable character, despite it being such a non-realistic situation being sci-fi, but yet is it non-realistic? Is it though? Because that what good sci-fi does is make you question if something could actually happen. And if that were to happen, what would be the morality of that? And this play certainly does that.
So this sci-fi situation obviously isn't happening in our real world right now, but in the future it could, or something similar could. And this play aims to ask, what would you do? Like all sci-fi does, what would you do? I don't know. Maybe we don't have the answer. But maybe we don't have the answer, but we'll never know if we don't at least ask the question. And that's what speculative fiction like sci-fi does. It asks the question. And I think that's what I love about sci-fi, really, and it's great to be seeing this done on stage for once. I really don't have much else to say without just rambling more, but I really cannot wait to read the other two uh, parts of the trilogy, though I'm kind of worried that it might end up going too far and ruin what was good about the first one, but also, because these are plays, uh, the only way to make it really done on stage is that each of these, supposedly, I only know the first one, but supposedly these can each stand on their own as a complete story. So. That's something interesting, too, I'll, I'll have to see about. Um, I'll definitely be reviewing the other two at some point, I'm sure, once I read them, of course. But anyway, I gave Advanced Man a 5 out of 5 on Goodreads, and by the way, I was the person who had to add it on Goodreads because it wasn't there yet, because, like I said, it's only been published like this so far. It's not flawless, but I wish Goodreads did it a 10 out of, uh, out of 10 stars because they would have given it like an 8 or a 9 instead of like a perfect score. It's not flawless. There are flaws in it. But the things that are good about it are just so uniquely good that I find it hard to give it anything less than a 5 out of 5. So, thanks for watching. Um, see you around. Bye!